Hey, what's up, guys? So I actually saw this book on TikTok. I didn't buy it from TikTok because I didn't want to put in my credit card information on that application. I bought it on Amazon, and I think that it's interesting, but I don't necessarily think that it resonates with me right now, but I'll continue to, to use it. I pretty much just finished the first part. And well, well, we'll see where it goes. I mean, it was pretty cheap, so it is what it is. Maybe if it can help me unlock, uh, you know, cer certain parts of my past and, and help help me with my mental health and with my future, that it would be cool. It would be worth it. So uh, just keep an open mind when you're reading these kinds of books. And I actually bought this book for my coworker, and he said, oh, you know, I don't like self-development books. They don't necessarily work, but... Uh, just have an open mind about it. So there's a Joe Dispenza book. It's Breaking the Habits of Being Yourself. And it kind of talks about how your childhood, it could dictate, you know, your, your personality, your childhood can shape who you are, your birth order, your culture, where you were born, stuff like that. And sometimes I would ask myself, oh, you know, why, why do I behave in this manner? Why am I this way? Uh, how can I improve and optimize myself so that I could be someone else in the second half of my life? I had like uh, limiting beliefs and I didn't love myself. And I think that I do. I, I take steps to show that I love myself, but I can't necessarily say I'm in love with myself. And I'm trying to learn how to uh, be a better person for the future so that uh, maybe I could help other people with similar problems and hopefully you know they, they could solve these problems earlier on in their life so there's a quote in this book unless you learn to face your own shadows you will continue to see them in others because the world outside of you is only a reflection of the world inside of you and i think it's pretty true because you attract mirrors of yourself you attract who you are in terms of the things that you like in terms of other people that are around you, how you're thinking. And just say, for example, for me, uh, maybe if I had, you know, if, if, if I didn't have a, a good image of myself, then I would attract a similar kind of person into my life. Or uh, when I'm driving, I'm more in a survival state. I'm pretty anxious, and that's why I like speeding. I just got, like, two, two big tickets, so uh, it's a ding. And it, it's been an ongoing problem in my life, and I'm, I'm trying to learn how to solve these problems and I actually consider just getting rid of my car because it, it kind of enables me to to drive in that manner. Another thing that I, I like about this book is uh, certain people like myself, I could be unaware of the things that I'm doing and only when I started journaling and I actually started to record a video of myself and I would listen to myself talking that I will be aware of the things that I'm saying whether they're positive or they're negative or they're true or they're not true. And uh, you you would act in accordance of how you feel about yourself. So just say, for example, if I said, oh, I look amazing, right? But if I didn't feel it, then it's not necessarily true. And it's good to focus on the positive aspects of you because I could focus on my bags, my teeth, my wrinkles, my grays, whatever, right? But they, these are little things. Um, I should focus on uh, more positive aspects of me. And I'm, I know I'm I'm not like a Brad Pitt, but uh, I, I think I'm decent looking and I have a lot to offer. I'm intelligent, so keep it up. I'll try to go through this book and maybe I could do like a review page by page and I could tell you what I think about it. May, maybe you would benefit from it, but I, I think that it would help me better understand the, the content. And this was one of my goals for this year was to do more book reviews. And I, I did a couple earlier on this year, but I haven't really been on it because uh, my focus is all over the place. So pretty much I've been trying to learn Spanish, the learning how to dance. I've been trying to learn how to be more social. My mom tried to teach me how to write Chinese and on how, how to cook and all of these different things that I, I think I'm kind of scatterbrained because um, I'm spreading myself really thin, but it depends on how fast and also fitness, how fast 
do you want to see results? And if you put in the work, you build your habits, your structure, that you will become a better person. So other problems that I saw with my speech is sometimes I would be too fast. I wouldn't pace myself. Sometimes I would use pause words like, uh, I think I would use double words. For example, what, what do you think? And it sounds kind of bad. So just be aware of these things and try to correct them. There's a uh, certain certain words or certain phrases that you could use to enunciate each letter each sound in the alphabet to try and help you communicate a lot better and these are things that i need to learn as a man i don't think that uh, they teach men how to express themselves how to communicate especially in the asian culture uh, i didn't get the i love yous i had the limiting beliefs so these are things that i wanted to try and fix for myself and I'm glad that I didn't repeat the mistakes of my parents. So here's a quote in the book. Unless we do conscious work on it, the shadow is almost always projected. That is, it is neatly laid on somebody or something else so that we do not have to take responsibility for it. Robert Johnson, uh, always be accountable and responsible for yourself because it shows that you know, you're aware of the things that you're doing and you're not going to blame someone else. It's not going to be a cop out. You can't improve unless you own you you own the bad things about you and, and give yourself credit for the good things about you. But uh, just try and have better practices. Uh, try and be aware of these things. Journal. You know, talk to yourself about it, and try try and take steps to change. Put yourself out there. Uh, do different activities. Um, uh, be responsible because. We're, we're all adults. Well, some of you guys might be kids, but you will be adults. The main reason why you want to be aware of certain things is because uh, the people that you interact with, you don't necessarily want to hurt them. Uh, may, maybe you don't know why you're acting in a certain manner, but it, it is your responsibility and there's no excuse for, for you to be acting that way. So just say, for example, if I said, oh, you know, I'm poor, uh, I'm Asian, you know, I got beat up as a kid. That there's no excuse for me to uh, to take my my anger out on somebody, and I I think that martial arts have helped me chan channel a lot of my darkness that I had when I first moved to the Bay Area. I graduated in 2019. I moved to this area in 2009. I couldn't get a job cleaning toilets, but uh, martial arts have helped me channel my anger and it helped me get out my energy. And it's like hitting a bag or getting your hands on somebody that wants to train with you. It gives you, it, it teaches you to learn how to lose and to be more confident in the future. So unconscious traits could be habits, patterns, emotions, protection, controls, bodily functions, beliefs, desires, blaming, denying, lying, attachment to things, thoughts, and feelings. And conscious could be logic, filtering, analytical movement, decision making, short term memory, willpower, critical thinking. I'm not sure how to interpret this right now. So maybe I'll make another video on uh, what I think that these things are, um, uh, how that they can help me and how they can help you. So there's this page called uh, Wu Mapping and it has a lot of traits that I have or had. So abandonment, um, guilt, trust, and neglect. And I, I think that it could stem from me not growing up with my mother and uh, for the longest time, I, I blamed my dad for it. He blamed himself. And then I I learned, you know, through my relationships that it's not one person, it's two people. And obviously, we, we could be accountable for the things that, that we're doing or not doing. And just, just be aware of you're, you're attracting mirrors of yourself. And just say, for example, you could attract uh, somebody who is unavailable because it's normal. You could attract somebody who makes uh, you feel guilty or they gaslight you. Uh, they, they don't make you feel safe and they don't necessarily appreciate the things that you're doing. Sometimes I, I could see when I'm talking to my mother that uh, she's not necessarily uh, respectful. She has like a victim mentality. She always points out my flaws. She talks about 
uh, what what I did wrong or, or I cheated or bad, but it's like, oh, I'm, I'm not the son that you envision in your mind because I didn't grow up with it. So uh, how, how could I say, oh, you know, I love you enough. It's like, I normally don't say I love you and I, I just show my love through action. I would try to to do this more because if, if I, for example, I'm introverted in general, I don't talk a lot. So if if I try to talk too much, maybe that's like the normal level of how somebody's talking. So that that's what I think. And may, maybe I'll visit her in December and maybe I won't. Because uh, the backstory behind it is I, I took two weeks off and I, I flew her out here. I pretty much tried to pay for everything that I could. And then she bounced after a week. And she said that, oh, you know, because I, I asked her, do you love yourself? I was asking these kinds of questions and she didn't like it. So I, I, I stopped asking and then she kept on bringing it up over and over and over. And then she pretty much said, oh, you know, uh, take me to the airport. I tried to get her to stay, but she didn't. Um, I, I let her go. I'm, I'm not going to try and uh, keep somebody in my space or control somebody because it's not my job to, to do that. And she, she cried in the car, and I, I honestly didn't know how to handle it. I, I just put on some meditation music for her, and then she left. And then we, we, we tried to talk after she got home, but it, it is what it is. I'll accept what comes my way. I won't expect anything. But she was saying, oh, you know, you could come visit me during uh, Thanksgiving. And, and she knows I have a trip planned to go to Japan. Uh, she she doesn't like, you know, want one person who I was in association with at the time. And then she kept on bringing it up. It's like, oh, you know, uh, you, you shouldn't hang out with this person. Like, they're, they're not good for you. And they're trying to control you, blah, 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 right? And it's like, yo, I'm a man. I would decide who's in my my life and who who I want to spend my time with. And in terms of Japan, I was supposed to go with somebody, but uh, their their communication is bad, so I'm just gonna do my own thing. I, I don't expect anything from anybody, and I'm not gonna try and uh, beg somebody or force somebody to be with me. If, if you want to be in my space, it's all good. If not, um, I'm a loner anyway, so I'm, I'm gonna just do my thing. I'm gonna have a good time in Japan. And I think that I'll try and do monk mode and try and improve the best that I can. So this is part one for fill in the blank. I always feel like I'm the left out one. And how, how is it that I managed to escape? So I, I like hobbies, cars, uh, martial arts, working out, activities, doing things. I never liked staying home because I felt like my home wasn't my home. So that's why I always like to be out and about. I like driving, journaling, being home, recording videos. I'm kind of narcissistic because I like listening and watching my own videos. And these are things that bring me peace. And I'm also so tired of uh, being alone in general, but I understand that these things take time. I, I have somewhat of a temper and the, these things excite me to, to meet new people and to be able to have opportunities to travel. I want to try new activities so that I can finally be social and learn how to grow as a person. And I think that there are certain jobs that I did in the past, such as when I was in middle school, I worked for, you know, refugee camp. I, I worked for Asian Community Center. I did construction. I worked in a Chinese restaurant when I was 13. Half of my money went to my parents. I, I liked that job because there was food there. Because... <laughs> That, that's how I ate pretty much. When, when I, before, I, when I was in high school, I did the nurse aid program. I did auto mechanics, computer science to learn, you know, well, what are things that I could be good at. I, I worked as a nurse in high school and also in uh, college. So I, I think that that helped me because I always wanted a purpose. I always wanted to help people. And it, it made me feel good about it, about myself um, doing those things. I worked a lot of double shifts when I worked that job. So for some reason, I always ended up attracting people like me, whether it was good or bad. And I, I deserve credit for what I do. So in the past, I never gave myself credit for the good things that I did. And, and I was always trying to prove myself worthy. And 
I, I think it stemmed from like a lack of self-esteem, lack of confidence, lack of self-love. For example, if, if I'm looking for something to eat and I, I won't be decisive about it. So if, if I'm like, yeah, I want sushi and then I see an Indian place, I'm like, yo, I want that too. But it's a common problem in the Bay Area because there's so many good food in this area. So uh, sometimes I, I could be hopping around, but uh, just knowing what you want specifically is, uh, is good for you. For example, my car, I built it out specifically how I wanted it. If you gave it to me any other way, I wouldn't want it. So I deserve credit and then respect and love for myself. So. so these are reflection questions. Why am I sometimes seduced into a victim mentality? I'm comfortable and familiar with the past and having lived like this way for many years, well, it will take me time to change. And I think that a lot of, a lot of things come from the past, like your culture, your family, your socioeconomical status, where you're born, the opportunities that you have. But I, I could say, you know, my, my childhood wasn't pleasant. I didn't love myself. I hated my childhood. But uh, when I really, really look back, I was born in the United States. I'm healthy. Uh, I, I had opportunities. I had a roof over my, my head. I had family. I, I didn't have my mother, which was uh, pretty damaging to me. But I, I had to learn that. Uh, just accept the things that the way that they roll out on uh, things happen for a reason have faith that uh, good things will happen in the future so what systematic improvements techniques can i use to replace my victim mentality and move into a more empowering belief about myself or the situation so become more aware of these issues educate myself on why i act speak and think the way this way and behave this way Practice better habits, stop consuming and associating with negative people, negative content such as music, uh, movies, uh, reading materials, and sleep more. Because sleep uh, plays a big role in your happiness. If I have hyperthyroid, so I don't necessarily get good sleep on, uh, just try and like detox for your dopamine. Don't use uh, stupid applications or, or things or talk, um, surround yourself with negative people. Uh, so try and try and socialize more and, and become more happy be be more uh, think of more of your blessings and, and be grateful for things have have a more gratitude mindset so what kind of thinking do I need to adapt in order to step outside of my limiting beliefs and focus on what excites me have a positive mindset uh, have the stack self-development books put myself out there so that I can communicate more and develop my skills and focus on where I want to go in the future, have a more open mind, accept everything and expect nothing in life, enjoy the day-to-day -day instead of the uh, end destination because uh, the day-to-day -day matters more over, you know, getting a black belt or, you know, retiring or something like that. Like, yeah, just enjoy the majority of the time your journey that matters the most. Uh, because you you have that time the most uh, take more trips plan more events and just, just learn I've, every day is an opportunity to learn I, and I noticed that when I talk to more people I get more perspective and I learn more about things that I would never know about so this is part two as a child I was told not to go out so sometimes I would ask my dad oh you know can I go out and then he said no and then other times I would just say, oh, I'm going out and then I would just leave. So this made me feel pretty isolated, controlled. Uh, I wanted my independence, my freedom. I felt like things would be different if I grew up with my mother. So I, I felt in love for myself. And I, I felt like, oh, you know, if she couldn't love me, then uh, who would love me? You know, how, how could I love myself? But I, I learned uh, growing up after meeting her that uh, she has problems, I have problems. And, I'm actively trying to solve these problems. I have to love myself. It's not love the you know, love, love from your mother, your parents, your brother, your woman. It's not going to complete you. you. You have to love yourself and, and live your own life. Go for the things that you want and be yourself when, when you can. Obviously, work is different. Um, I wish I could tell myself to invest more to have a more, you know, independent mindset, more entrepreneurial, uh, be more open-minded, and to be more social, to invest, 
and I'm grateful for my health, my freedom, technology, my country, my opportunities that I have, and the relationships that I have as well. But I wish my guardians would have had these things. So I wish that my parents and my brothers, they would improve. And technically, they, they're still alive, so they do have the opportunity to improve. It's not my job to make them see these things. Although the, if they wanted for me to help them, I would help them, but I can extend my hand. If you don't take it, you don't take it. It's all on you. I, I, I will improve myself and I'll rise up. And those people who want to follow me, you will. And those people that don't, it's all good, you know, cause we're all on our own journey and it's nothing personal. So what memories did I extract from this exercise? I have my childhood, no love for myself or from my family, I, I did not appreciate what I had, even if it was a little, even if what I had was little. Look, look inside and be grateful for the things that you have. And I had a home, school, work, clothes, water, food, the basic essentials, I'm still alive. So I, I still have the opportunity to grow and improve. I'll be 41 later this year, and I think that sometimes I focus too much on age. I know I'm in my half-life, and you know, I said life can be short, it could be long. So uh, there, there's people that are not alive anymore. So you, you have time, you have opportunity. Uh, just utilize these things uh, to get to go where you want to go. Obviously, certain people, they're not in certain spots. So just, just be patient and have urgency and uh, believe. How can I reframe these memories so that they do not continue to hurt or hinder me in the future? Uh, believe in fate because things happen for a reason whether they're bad or they're good uh, maybe in the future you'll look back and you'll understand the, the lessons that you could have learned from these always think in a sense of uh, you, you can win or you can learn because of a loss sometimes it's not bad you know it's like if you're losing certain people in your life or certain items that uh, you make room for new things and sometimes these things they're meant to play out that way they're, they're there for a reason and for example, I, I went to nursing school. I quit my, my job. I, I lost my my money, my relationships, my, my status at the time. And I used this pain to improve myself and to become a better person and to go into the direction that I want to go into the future. So a mistake, it wasn't a mistake. It was meant to be. So I, I needed to find love in myself instead of trying to find it in someone else because I think uh, heartbreak, it, it teaches you a lot about yourself. And I learned uh, over the past three years that uh, love, love, it doesn't come from someone else. It comes inside you. It comes from within. And you have to love yourself and to be able to let other people go. Because uh, people come and go, but you'll always have yourself who you are. Uh, always pay yourself first. Always uh, love yourself first. And uh invest in yourself invest in the knowledge your experiences whether it's traveling or a course or a book and these these heartbreaks that they, they teach you about yourself they bring you to a low point so that you're sick of it they give you a lot of pain but hopefully that pain can turn into fire so that it could give you motivation to get either get into better shape to get smarter to learn how to dance you know learn how to do do whatever um, also, another thing that I said was uh, learn, learning Spanish. I learned Spanish when I was in middle school, high school, college. It's not the same because um, I didn't immerse myself in it. I was more in a survival state. I didn't care about learning. I felt the first grade I had to repeat it. I was always behind in my reading because um, I felt like I was a stupid kid, but I wasn't necessarily stupid. It was because I was in a survival state. Um, I got into a lot of fights when I was a kid. And I thought, oh, you know, it's because I'm Asian, but I actually didn't like myself either. So um, I got into a lot of fights, but they, it, it teaches you to to defend yourself. And everybody should learn self-defense. Everybody should be in martial arts. Everybody should be into fitness to be strong because you, you never know when you would have to defend yourself. And it builds confidence. It builds like your social circle and it, it teaches you how to lose and how to succeed. So how can I regularly serve myself with compassion, consolation as I would give to my child self? Treat yourself with patience and respect. 
Uh, love yourself and no good good will come your way. Positive events. I have the opportunity to shape my destiny and work and play and meet new people, learn about myself and, and about the world. So if I could give myself advice as a kid, I would say that uh, you, you have to learn how to love yourself, learn how to communicate, because when I was a kid, <laughs> I wanted to be a pathologist because I was thinking, oh, they're dead already. They're not going to talk to me. And I, I just accepted things the way that they were. I didn't ask myself, why? Why am I acting this way? Why do I think this way? And to, to have a more positive mindset. It's just up. I, I didn't have it as a person, as a kid. I was more in a survival state, limited mindset. So fill in the blank part three, not becoming the best version of myself scares me the most. When I become scared and anxious, I tend to isolate myself. It sometimes sucks because I know that I need to be open and to be changing and improving. And this makes me feel highs and lows. My anxious teachers, my ink, my anxiety teaches me to that I have weaknesses and that I can learn to mitigate, if not cure, these problems. I understand that I am on a long journey and I need to be patient and have urgency and be more willing to try new things and be open. But I, I love myself unconditionally. I, I think for this book, it, it talks a lot about your weaknesses and things that you can improve. And in my opinion, that uh, we could be, I could be so self-conscious about myself and how other people think of me. But in all honesty, most people, they don't care about me because they're more concerned about themselves and uh, well, whatever my weaknesses are, other people have them too. So if, if I could try and solve my weaknesses and try and help other people in return, that I, I think that that would be a good mission in life and why not, you know? It's like if, if I could teach a kid that uh, your, your love doesn't come from your parents, it comes from yourself or, or that you're, you're good enough you know that you you have strengths you you have weaknesses and you're unique you you are who you are and that's what makes you special you have a purpose and you know you you were created to be the best version of yourself and you you will get good things you you will accomplish good things in life so what is my current fear and if it were to happen what would be the best case scenario also keep in mind for these answers that they will be changing because are you going to be a different person Maybe today, tomorrow, one year from now, two years from now, you're not going to be the same person. So you you always be learning. Your perspectives will be different. So I will not have enough money to retire or not be happy and fulfill my destiny. I will be able to help other people like me uh, solve my problems and provide value to the market, have financial freedom, my freedom, uh, be happy, be healthy, have self-love, and the best case scenario is imagine your life. How, how, how do you want it to be? Where where do you want to go? Like um, imagine if you could be a travel vlogger or if you could be helping people with uh, similar problems or maybe uh, you could be a martial arts instructor or something like that. Uh, it, it is possible. You have one life to get it. If my fears and anxiety were teachers, what lessons would they teach me? Uh, you control your mind and your reality, focus on positives, fears, anxieties, are they can be false or they can be real. It's whatever you make it. So just say, for example, if I say I'm a king, am I the king of England? No, I'm not. But I'm the king of my reality. I'm the strongest person in my world. So it, it depends on context. And some people could say, oh, you know, you're delusional, but I, I, could, I could be a king when... I'm driving my car and I'm doing my thing on the track or if I if I take my shirt off to go for a run, I'm the star of the show and all of you guys are my fans. So it depends on context and on how you want to look at it. But at the end of the day, it only matters what you think and where you want to go and what you want to do. So uh, focus within and don't focus outside of yourself. So you're, you're going to act how you feel about yourself. And I touched on this before. So if I say, you know, I'm amazing looking, but if I don't feel it, then it's not true. But if I say, oh, you know, I'm good looking and I feel it in my heart. So your mind and your heart have to be aligned. And that's one of the reasons as to why 
I I'm into fitness is because I grew up on five six and a half. I'm about one sixty, so I'm not that big of a person. I got into a lot of fights when I was a kid. I I did martial arts when I was in two thousand nine when I moved to California. I just wanted to be able to hold my own against a bigger person or a higher rank person. I know that I won't win every fight, and I know I have the mentality of if, if you want to get it, I'll, I'll give you damage. So it, it is what it is that you have that, that fighter's mentality of never losing, but just know that these losses, they will teach you to become better and you compare yourself to yourself. So how can I build more positive outlook on unknown future? So educate, education, journal, budget, time, money, uh, sleep, diet, exercise, set calendar events to structure your day. Only surround yourself with positive people, similar mindsets to where you want to go and what you want to achieve. Pay yourself first. Cut out the time wasters, things, people, habits. Put yourself out there. Work hard. Give yourself credit for the things that you're doing. Build your social circle because uh, who your, your network is is uh, they, they could have a deep impact on where you want to go, uh, how you're influenced, uh, your confidence, your self-love, have patience, have urgency, uh, find your self-love. And just, just imagine, you know, uh, well, imagine the good things that you did in your past and imagine the things that you will create in the future. So if, if you have the opportunity and the blessings, go for it, man. You have one life, one love. So this is fill in the blank part four. Driving in heavy traffic makes me tense. I typically feel tense sensation in my mind and my heart. And this makes me angry and anxious and on, my head's on the swivel. I always feel like I, I'm on point when I'm driving fast versus when I'm driving slow because I, I more pay attention to the road and I anticipate what other people are doing. I trust my skills and not necessarily other people. Uh, when this happens, I start to drive more on the defense. I think it is because I'm in a survival state and I'm avoidant. Um, I want to avoid driving along uh, side of people or trucks if I can help it. Uh, next time I feel tense, I will soothe myself by being more aware, slowing down, trying to relax, put on some music, maybe comedy. Uh, just think of consequences of things that could happen. You know, just be safe out there. Um, also, for people, while you're driving and you're in a survival state, sometimes you could be thinking about the most negative things, but just imagine, you know, things that happen in your life. Maybe you had a bad incident, but the majority of the time, it's good, you know, that you you would be safe, you would be aware. Other people are, or other forces that would be protecting you, whether you're religious, whether you think, oh, you know, God is going to protect me or the universe is going to protect me. So sometimes you would be safe, sometimes you're not safe, and uh, you, you just take life as it is. And uh, however it comes to you is, is what you're going to get. So uh, the majority of the time, things are good, you know. So ju just try and have a more positive mindset and then focus on the positives over the negatives or focusing on things that you don't want. So when does my anxiety take over my mind and body? Do I see a common reoccurring thing as to what triggers my anxiety? When I commute to and from work, I do not want to get stuck in traffic. That is the nature of the area, schedule, situation, slow down or stop and go through traffic. Um, tight spaces, people cut in and out, um, drive earlier, uh, have better sleep, be more patient, avoid certain times. Your body is just going to react pretty much to, uh, to past events that you had and your perspective on life. So if you have a negative perspective on life, then that's how you're gonna act. But if it's more positive, then you could be more relaxed. You could have more control of time and not let these external things control you. Because the happier you are, the longer you live, the, the better experience that you have in your life. And for sure, the, these triggers can be pretty common. So sometimes you can solve them and sometimes you can't. What can I physically do to release my anxious energy and tension? So have better sleep, uh, talk to myself, work out, journal, go to the bathroom before I go out for a long drive or a long walk, uh, listen to more positive content, do everything that I need to do before I start. For example, when I'm driving, put, make sure I put my seatbelt on, my glasses, uh, 
make sure I set the heat, my seats in a proper position, my mirrors, my radio, your, my phone is docked, uh, my radar setup, uh, maintenance, make sure that my mind is focused on driving instead of other things, the millions of things that we have to do. Uh, make sure that your maintenance is up to date, your tires, your oil, your pressure, so that uh, you don't get stuck on the side of the road. So yeah, just try and do every single thing to, to try and mitigate these, these stresses. I'm, I like to show up early so that I'm not worried about arriving late. What I thought, what thoughts help soothe my anxiety? How can I improve myself? Talk to be less self-critical when these emotions arise. So just be try and be more positive, have more peaceful thoughts. Tell myself that these events are temporary and most days were fine. Looking in the past and then acknowledge my thoughts, my emotions, slow down and be more patient. Think of happy thoughts, such as if when you're on vacation or when you're hanging out with your friends. Think of times where you're super relaxed or maybe you're in the zone. You're doing a hobby, something that you're real good at. So self-talk is pretty important. They say that we have 50,000 thoughts in a day. So how you talk to yourself is really, really important because it's going to determine, you know, how you speak, how you act, your habits, uh, your behaviors, and your destiny pretty much. That, that's like a, a Lao Tzu quote. So communication, it, it's pretty big. So for the five love languages, I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but uh, communication, I put that last in the past because I, I think that uh, gestures, gifts, like access service, things that you're doing, they're more important, but I'm a man, right? So uh, just say, for example, if, if a woman, she's more into communication, they talk three to four times more than men. So they require this communication on... I'm still learning. Sometimes I could be arrogant into thinking that uh, how I think and how I do things are the best, but uh, they, they can be teachers to you too because uh, communication is big. So if you're saying 50,000 good thoughts to yourself, that it will help you on your mental health. But if you're more saying negative things to yourself 50,000 times, then it's not good. You're, you're always going to be able to talk to yourself and you're, you're always going to have yourself to, to help you and guide you to wherever you want to be. So this is fill in the blank part five. As a child, I was reprimanded for not cleaning or doing chores. My response to this was by taking punishment and to be more responsible. After this, I've always been more mindful and had attention to detail. I care so much about progress and completeness. It triggers me now when things are chaotic. I now hold a compassionate space for myself and embrace this part of me. And I think, for example, I, I like my car to be clean inside and out because I had to clean the house when I was a kid and I got in trouble when it wasn't. So this became my norm. This became my standard. And it's interesting how, you know, well, what you did as a child, it, it transfers into your adult life and, and how you want to be and how you behave. So sometimes people, they don't necessarily understand themselves, and sometimes you don't have to understand, but uh, sometimes it, it is needed to, uh, to understand, to be able to change and improve. Reflection questions, in what ways have I been reprimanded in my childhood and beyond? Physical, verbal, negative, or limiting beliefs, punishment. I felt like my home was not mine, and I never liked being home. So even into my adulthood, I always wanted to, uh, to be somewhere else. I never liked to stay home. I always wanted to go somewhere, whether it was a gym, the library, martial arts, or just like walking down the street. This is the main reason why I like having a car is because it gives me the freedom and flexibility to drive somewhere. And my Mazda Miata, I drove to New York two times. I drove up to Alaska. It's a 2018. I bought it in August. I already have 100,000 miles on it. And it, it's, a, it's an expression of who I am and, and it gives me mobility and sometimes it, it kind of feels like an escape. It gives me a rush because I, I modified it and I'm, I'm more into, uh, you know, doing fast things even though I know it's bad and I need to slow down. How did this impact what I chose to do, not do in the present moment? In what ways am I holding back because of these experiences? I always wanted to be out doing things. I strive to prove myself to be worthy, to be the best. And I, I didn't give myself uh, credit for 
these accomplishments. I grew up poor, so I, I never wanted to be poor. I actually told my middle school teacher that I would rather die than be poor as an adult, and uh, I meant it. I meant it then, and, and I, I do still mean it now. But uh, we're rich. It could be thought of in terms of money, but it's not necessarily all money. It could be like gifts, things that you can give to other people, your talents, or you know, basic essentials that you have. So I, I didn't enjoy the moment and I wasn't happy and I wasn't aware of the bad behaviors and limiting beliefs that I had in the past. I always made excuses as to why I wasn't where I wanted to be or why I didn't have what I wanted, but change. So what, what activities can I partake in to fuel my inner child and allow him to feel fully expressed? So I wrote down, uh, I should read more, interact, with more people to communicate, to build my social circle, to envision my future, expect good things to happen, improve my health, my education, my experience, my mental, physical, spiritual health, uh, be more uh, financially responsible, to, to budget, to improve my finances, my fashion, my skin, my teeth, because how you, how you look, and it, it could affect how you feel about yourself, your fashion, invest, uh, uh, have more of a business mindset, enjoy your day-to-day, -day. Uh, focus on, you know, the present instead of the future or the past because you don't control the present or the, the past or the future. Get more sleep. It, it affects, you know, how, how you feel throughout the day. It, it affects your future and your longevity. So focus on your sleep. So this is fill in the blank part six. As I grow older, I feel like a child part of me becomes further and further away. I feel okay with this part because it's fate towards this. Uh, some Sometimes I put myself in a box by labeling myself. I'm Asian, I'm introverted, I'm poor, INTJ, I'm short, I'm average, you know. These are descriptions that they may be true or they may not be true. And even if they're true, you don't necessarily have to um, focus on them or believe in them. I understand that I'm ever changing and evolving each day. Uh, one way I can foster my child self is by accepting and having self-love. I'll always recognize the strong talents that I have and the successful things that I do. Part of me and showing this vision of my self-love and recognition. What do I admire about my past self that I wish I could continue to foster more in the present day? So as a kid, I always wanted to shoot for my dreams and I always wanted to grow, be stronger, uh, be better version of myself, be relentless, hardworking, uh, be open to learning and taking opportunities. I, I was a tank. I, I took a lot of mental and physical damage from myself, from my, my family, from society, and I kept on going. Even though there, there is racism in life, that uh, just don't focus too much on it and, you know, stand up for yourself when you need to. Uh, don't, don't have a negative mindset and saying, oh, you know, it's because I'm Asian, nobody loves me, nobody wants to hang out with me. It's not true. Because there's been plenty of people that that love me, that want to be around me. And, you know, it's not who you are. It's what you are. Well, what you represent and well, what you're willing to, to give to somebody. And not necessarily my skin or my eyes. So when, when, where do I find myself hiding parts of my personality in order to fit the mold? I suppress my thoughts and my emotions. In society, they don't teach men to be emotional or to express their thoughts. And I think that it's a disservice to men, but it's all a game and every, everybody has their purpose, their objectives in life, and you, you, you need to balance it. There is no black and white. It's all great. There's always exceptions to certain situations. Uh, don't, I didn't ask for things that I wanted or give input. For example, when you're in class, if, if you had a question, you should ask your question because other people probably have that question. On, it's better to, to know the answer than to not to not to know. If, if you want to shoot your shot and ask somebody out, why not, you know, fit, um, get the answer. And if they don't want it, it's all good, you know. They have the freedom and liberty. Uh, I, I didn't want to be known for unpopular views. I, want, I wanted to be a role model or to be passive. Hmm. Or to display positive traits as an adult. Uh, as as a man in society, uh, just keep in mind that uh, for your per your personal life, you you could be more expressive, but in your professional life, it could be different. If you don't have 
the mobility to, to express who you want to be. Um, ju just be smart about it and use your common sense. So well, what do I think will happen if I were to be my full self during these instances? Um, I would need to gain my freedom first before I could fully express myself and understand that there are ups and downs in life. Uh, in my private life, it is great to be who, who I want to be and to be able to express myself because I, I feel like um, I'm not hiding. I'm not using this energy to put up a facade. I'm more open. And they say that uh, you can hold more water with an open hand versus a, a clenched fish, fist. Um, in my professional life, I like having to be, you know, conservative and showing my strengths. So it just depends on where you are in life. It depends on your circumstances. On uh, you, you can show strengths both in positive and in your professional life. And sometimes you would have to be reserved, and that is a strength in itself as well. So, like I said, um, both.